Hi guys! So, as I promised, I'm going to do a halfway through review of Math Lessons for the Living Education, Book 6, Level 6. Um, so, one question that I get a lot with that is, is it actually for Grade 6? So, the first thing you need to do is have your kids go online and just do the little test they have, like a placement test, and it'll tell you what level they're ready for. Um, the second thing is, no, it doesn't necessarily mean grade 6. So if you look, it'll tell you that this level 6 could be used for grades 5 or 6, okay? The level above that could be used for grades 6 or 7. But again, that totally depends on your kids. I have two daughters that are using this, ages 10 and 11. Um, they both do 6th grade work for everything right now, um, before math lessons for the living education, because this is our first year to use it. Before that, um, for the last, let's see, for fifth and fourth, they used easy peasy. I'm having trouble thinking what they used for third. Before that, they used Harcourt math. So, um, they are just grade level, well, my 10-year-old's above grade level, um, and my 11-year-old is at grade level, so they're both doing 6th grade, and this book seems to work well with them. Um, I just did the review for level 2, in which I stated I felt like it was a little below grade level, um, and that my son just found it very easy, he's 2nd grade, and I had to supplement and do stuff. This book, I don't supplement anything else. Um, I don't feel like it's too easy. I feel like it's spot on for them in the sixth grade. Um, if you have an advanced fifth grader, then that might work for them. If you have, a, you know, a struggling seventh grader, maybe this is a good fit. You just have to have your kid take the placement test to really know what level they need. Um, if you want a detailed page by page, day by day um, review where I show you what the book looks like inside and really get into the nitty gritty of it. I will link that either above or below. I took that video before we started using it just to show what it was like. Okay, so let's see. I already answered the grade level question. Another question I get is do I have to teach or is it student independent? So yes and no. Sometimes my kids can read the stories. If you don't know, um, there are stories um, for every lesson. Each lesson has a few, you know, pages that they work on. So there's a story before they start working. They read that, and it's really just a fun story where it shows how that math can be used in real life. Um, and then so they read their story, and then it explains if they're going to learn a new concept it explains how to do it, it shows example problems, it shows step by step here, let me help you work this first problem with you. So yes, yeah, sometimes they read their story, they read the directions, they look at the example problems, they look at the how they do the step by step first problem, and they're good to go. They've got it, they work on it, they're done. Sometimes they read the story and the directions and see the example problems, and they're still like, what? Huh? I don't get it. So then I would have to step in and be like, okay, well, let me go through this with you. Let me look at the directions and, and explain it to you orally. So this could depend on your kid. Do they learn best, you know, orally? Do you have to hear it? Do you have to read it? How do they learn? I have two different learners. So sometimes I have to help one and not the other. Sometimes I help both. Um, it just depends. It depends on what they're learning, what the concept is, and all that stuff. So is it teacher dependent? Well, that's going to depend on your kid. Um, if you have a very independent learner who can just read everything and get it and go, then no, you could hand them the book and be like, have fun, see you later, do your math. <laughs> um, now for my second grader, for level two, yes, I read him all the stories. I don't read them their stories. They read the stories. If you want to see what those stories look like, again, go to that first review video. Um, and then, yeah, so sometimes I help them, sometimes I don't. Um, do I like it so far? Yes, I do like it. Um, I read online that the lady who uh, made it thought made it to where each lesson would take about 30 minutes and they're done and go on with their day. 
that is not always the case. I don't know if it's just my kids or what. Sometimes, yeah, 30 minutes or less and they're done. And then other times I have to split the day up. So like, let's say day 56, they're going to do three pages. Well, sometimes it's a new concept and those three pages, it's just a lot. And I feel like it's too much. We have other stuff we need to do and I don't want our whole day to be taken up with math. And I'll split that up into like, make it two days, but they're just working on one day's worth of work. Like if that's their day 72 or 56 or whatever, I'll split it up if that makes sense. Um, so I do feel like sometimes it's a little intense for them because it'll introduce a new concept and just go, bam, here it is. Here's a new concept, run with it, do three pages of it. And we have to slow down and really work on it because what it'll do is here's your new concept, do it. And then it just moves on to the next concept. If that makes sense. Like they don't have, there might be three pages of that new concept, but then it goes on to another one. And so they want you to do those three pages in one day, and then they want you to jump forward and learn another new concept already. Um, but not every time, just sometimes. And when that happens, that's when we slow down and we turn that three days worth of one day into two days or three days, okay? Depending on what they need before we start learning another new concept. Um, so sometimes me, myself, and my two girls doing it feel like it moves a little fast. It is mastery approach, though. So, um, you might be learning a new concept, but you're also still throwing in what you have learned from the beginning onward. So I do like that because they might learn a new concept and they only work on it for two or three days and then it teaches them another new concept. And I'm like, wait, stop. They don't know everything yet. They're not, they don't have it mastered yet, but it's okay because they throw that review in, splash some of this, splash some of that in throughout the book. So it works out. It works out. Okay. Um, would I buy it again? Yes, I would. I like it. They like it. While sometimes it might move too fast, um, I would rather it move a little fast than move way too slow, like that second level that I have, um, where I'm having to look for other things to give him and worry that, you know, he should be moving on. Come on, let's go. Let's, I don't like to skip pages, but sometimes we have to skip pages. So I would rather it move a little too fast to where I'm like, okay, let's slow this down. Let's break this up. Um, because then sometimes when they get that new concept and it just sticks, then we can just keep rolling and learning. And I like it and they like it. I asked them before I took this video, I said, you know, what's your review on it? What would you want to say? And they said they like it. They enjoy it. Um, but sometimes like I've been saying over and over that new concept comes and then they don't have enough time to practice it before another one comes except for in those review questions. Um, so, you know, if your kid's a fast learner, um, if you like to move fast, then yes, I recommend the book for you. If you like to take it super slow and really stay focused on one main concept for a while and not just have it mixed in re as review, then maybe try something different. Um, but Compared to other masks, I like this one. They like this one. We're going to keep using this one. So I'm trying to think if there was any other questions. I know I had other ones. Um, it is hole punched, um, which is really handy. If you have a left-hander, this is my right-handed kid's book. So there's all the pages in there. Um, but for my left-hander, we can rip them out. So that way that crease is not in her way and we can put it in her binder. Like I said in my first video, it gives you a list of everything you'll need at the beginning. So when we got our book, we went, we bought all the supplies we needed. So it's good to go um, and you're not left, you know, ready to start school that day. And oh no, I have to go to the store because I don't have this and this and that. That's all handled at the beginning. So anyway, I do suggest this book for, you know, sixth grade. We really like it. And it seems to follow perfectly along with what we were doing, even though we did easy peasy for fifth. This follows in this falls in line with that. Um, if you've never looked into Easy Peasy, it is a little bit advanced. Um, not ridiculously so slow so, but it's a little bit. But this falls right in line with that. So anyway, if you have any other questions, just drop them down below and I will answer them. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Pretty straightforward. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. See you later. Bye.